Good morning. My name is Pastor T.W. Broughton. I'm coming to you from my home. I'm the pastor of the Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Boykin, Alabama. Um, before we get started, I'd like to say happy birthday to my daughter, um, Hannah Lillian Broughton, who turned nine on uh, the 20th of this month. Um, uh, now we'll delve into our sermon today. We have a lot to cover, and I'm going to do my best to keep it in the 30-minute time frame. Um, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Luke 8, uh, verse 43, um, as we bow our heads. Our Father, child in heaven, we come to you this day, dear Father. Thank you for the blessing you bestowed upon us. Only asking that you come in this place and touch us right now. Thank you. Amen. Again, I state, turn to uh, Luke 8, uh, verse 43, um, and I'll read from NIV and KJV. Um, we should be moving closer to being KJV ready by now. Um, the NIV reads, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. And the KJV reads, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all of her living, uh, had spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. Um, this morning we'll be preaching from the title of um, Lord, I have some issues. Lord, I have some issues. Um, we all have issues in our lives, uh, different things that uh, bother us, uh, have always bothered us, different things that have plagued us. Um, some of us say that um, things that the devil has plagued us with, but if we be real honest, just things that we deal with in our everyday um, comings and goings. Um, thing, most of us deal with the same things over and over and over again, be we um, drunks, um, be we harlots, um, be we thieves, liars, um, whatever our issue is, are, um, was, still dealing with, whatever that issue may be, um, we deal with them. We deal with them. Be we Christians, be we uh, working on becoming Christians, or if this is your first time even listening to a sermon because you heard that um, the way that I go about things are a little different than others, um, whatever your um, reasoning for listening today um, may be, um, I still say, I still can state that whoever you may be, um, you, much like me, have issues. Um, I will delve into some of my personal issues of the past, and um, I still have issues, but um, through my college years, I was a full-on alcoholic, um, drank every day, every morning, every afternoon, um, had demons, uh, full-on demons, um, just dealt with lots of uh, personal issues through my life. Uh, when I moved on to medical school, um, I dealt with uh, uh, bouts of depression, um, dealt with uh, um, suicidal ideations um, when I didn't do well. Um, if you don't know what ideations is, uh, suicidal thoughts. Um, just had issues, man. Just I, I've had issues through my life. Um, I love my mom. I love my dad. Um, but had issues. Uh, me and my, my dad didn't always get along, even though we have a great relationship right now. Um, we, we had issues. Um, I, I've dealt with issues with the sense of I, I didn't always want to be a preacher. I, I didn't think that to be cool. Uh, I didn't see how that would line up with being the person that I wanted to be. Um, so I, I took issue with that. Um, uh, just just stating fact, um, I have had and still have issues. Um, how do you deal with those issues? Um, Pastor, how, how, how did you come full circle and, and now sit before this screen and, and able to state before the world that you've had issues and still have issues and be okay with that and move forward and be able to smile and go out in front of people and talk and, and, and be the person that you are and the person that God will have you to be. How can you do those things and still state that you have issues? How can you say that you used to be an alcoholic, but now you're fine? How can you say that you used to have issue with your dad, but now you and your dad love each other and can sit around and laugh and talk without any problems? How can you say that you had all of these issues, but now everything is fine? Um, today, I, I will delve into these things. And if you are like me, and have had a few issues along the way, or if you still have a lot of issues, um, please listen closely. Um, I pray that this will help someone. Um, I, I only um, let you into my life so you can know that um, I'm a real person and um, you can have issues and, and still make it and be okay. You can, you can have issues and, and everything turn out just fine 
if you do some things to, to work on those issues. So as we delve through Luke 8, um, um, just see that there was a woman, and as the, as the KJV says, there was a woman that had an issue, okay? So in Luke 8, we find that uh, Jesus has, has just gotten off the boat. So he has, as they said, he has gone to the other side. So he has just calmed down the storm. He has said, peace be still and the calm. The storm has become has become calm and he has now stepped off the boat. Immediately after he steps off the boat, he finds that there are some people out there with some issues. And I, I find this strange because a lot of times we never think about the fact that as Jesus steps off of the calming of the storm, after the storm is calm, he steps back into the real world. And just as soon as you step into the real world, you realize that there are so many people out there with issues. As you look upon other people's lives, I hate to hear people say this, uh, uh, Dr. Broughton, if I had your hand, I'd cut mine off. Well, if you had my hand and you cut yours off, you would just be one-handed because my hand has issues just like your hand has issues. Now, my issues might not be your issues, but hear what I say. We all have issues. It's just how you choose to deal with your issues. So we find that as Jesus steps off the boat, he runs into people that have issues. And that's real world. Everybody that you see has their own set of problems, their own issues. As he steps off, he finds a man that is literally full of hell. And everybody has a church member or a family member that is like this, that is full of hell. This man was literally named Legion because he was just full of demons. He was full of hell. And as Jesus was dealing with this man's issue, before he could finish dealing with the man that was full of hell, before he could drive out the demons out of this man into the swine, a preacher came upon him. Yes, I said a preacher. It said a leader in the synagogue. A preacher came upon him and he too had issues. Um, um, uh, and it said that his daughter was sick and his daughter was dying. And, and it didn't say that the preacher came to Jesus asking him for prayer. It didn't say that the preacher came to Jesus saying anything other than that I have a problem, Jesus, that I can't fix. I'm so tired of people thinking that preachers don't have problems. I'm so tired of thinking that preachers are perfect. And, and, and just as soon as a preacher has a problem or a preacher does something that the church doesn't find to be uh, uh, preacherly or, 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 or according to the preacher code that they are going to run out in the streets and talk about the preacher's issues. Well, I'm so sorry to say that preachers are people too. We have issues. We have problems. And as opposed to running out and talking about our problems in the street, as opposed to running out and talking about our issues, talking about the fact that we have a drinking problem or that our families are falling apart or that our, our, we're, we're getting a divorce or that our children are having problems, as opposed to running out and talking about your pastor or your preacher or spreading their business Instead of that, Jesus did not run out and talk about this, this young synagogue leader's problems. It said just as soon as Jesus heard the fact that the synagogue leader had a problem, that he had an issue, he immediately went to tend to this leader's problem. So church, hear what I say. Now, I'm not talking to people that don't go to church because you would not understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that go to church and that you have a pastor. When your pastor has problems, when he has issues, when he's going through things, when you find out on Facebook that something's going on in your pastor's life, when you hear through the rumor mill that something's going on in your pastor's life, when you hear through the gossip line that something's going on in your pastor's life, instead of you being the dog that carried the bone, why don't you do this? Why don't you immediately go and help your pastor? Because your pastor has issues too. But after Jesus tended to the person that was full of hell, after he was trying to tend to the preacher, it said that there was a woman that had an issue of blood. Now, we're going to just delve into this woman that had an issue because it says she literally had an issue. So these other people had issues, but we're going to just stay right here for a minute if that's okay with everyone. So it said that the woman had an issue. Now, before we get to how Jesus fixed her issue, 
we have to delve into what the issue was. See, so often people want to fix their problem before they actually acknowledge that they have a problem and figure out what that problem is. Too often, we're trying to fix something before we acknowledge it and figure out what it is that the, what the problem actually is. So this woman had an issue. It said that her issue was that she was bleeding or that she was on her cycle for 12 years. Now, a lot of ladies out there kind of understand what this lady is going through. And you say, preacher, what do you mean, kind of? See, it was different back then, so you only kind of understand what she was going through. You might understand physically what she was going through, but you don't understand spiritually nor emotionally what she was going through. So right now, I, I, I need to take you into this woman's life so you can understand where she was physically, spiritually, and emotionally. See, she had three separate things going on at one time. Her issue wasn't just blood. Her issue was three separate things that were pertaining to the lack of or the fact that she was losing blood. And it was all based on Old Testament law. So first of all, she was tired. She was anemic. She was losing blood. So if you lose blood for 12 years, your body can only produce blood at a certain rate. So she was losing blood for 12 years. So it comes a point where you're she was just tired. So she was physically tired from losing the blood. Hear what I say, y'all. It comes a point where your issue, whatever you're dealing with in your life, just physically becomes draining on you. If you're an alcoholic, it just becomes a point where drinking all the time just physically becomes draining on you. If you're, if, if you're a liar, it becomes a point where the fact that you lie all the time, it just, it just physically starts to wear on you. Whatever your issue is, it just comes a point where just dealing with the problems of your life, be it your bills, be it whatever, be it depression, be it alcoholism, drug abuse, fornication, adultery, just whatever you're dealing with right now, whatever your issue may be, it just comes a tipping point where you physically just get tired of dealing with the problem. So I need you to see that this lady had bled for 12 years. So it became a point where she was just physically tired. Now, I also need you to see that Based on Old Testament law, she was unclean. So when you were bleeding or on your cycle, a woman was deemed unclean. So while being unclean, she could not be around people. She could physically not be touched. She could not cook food. She could not be around her children. She could not be touched by her husband until she was her cycle had stopped and then she had to wait seven days before someone could touch her. So if she had been bleeding for 12 years, that means that nobody had come into physical contact with her for 12 years. Let me put that into another word that people could understand a little better. She had physically been shunned from society for 12 years. No one had come in contact. That means she hadn't had a hug in 12 years. Her husband hadn't kissed her in 12 years. Her children had not touched her in 12 years. No one had laid hands on her in 12 years. She had not had a conversation where she was close to anyone in 12 years because, see, no one would want to come in contact with her because then they too would be deemed unclean and would have to go outside of the city and they too would have to stay out there until seven days for them to be clean. So she had been just just shunned by society because of what was going on with her issue. Hear what I say, y'all. Some of us have issues that are so bad that society has shunned us. Some of us are, are bipolar. Some of us are depressed. 
Some of us are, are, are going through alcoholism or drug abuse. And because of these things, society has deemed us so different from everyone else that they, they, they separate us and put us off to the side. And, and it just feels like we're so alone. And maybe somebody out there understands what I'm talking about right now. I felt so alone when I was going through my depression because I couldn't talk to anyone because I felt like people would judge me. And, and I felt so alone because I felt like my parents wouldn't understand because I felt like they thought I'd be, I was crazy if I told them that I was depressed because I didn't pass a test. I just, I felt like I couldn't talk to my preacher. So who do you talk to when you feel like you are separated from society because of your personal issue? Let's go one step further. I said this lady had three things going on because of her issue of blood. She felt useless. A woman's worth was based on the fact that she could make male babies for her husband. Well, if your husband can't touch you and you're on your cycle, that means that you cannot then make babies. So if your husband can't touch you, and you can't make babies, and your worth is based on the fact that you make male babies, then that made this woman useless. There's some people out there that feel like they have lost all of their self-worth, their worldly worth, their family worth. They're just, they're all in all because of whatever issue they're dealing with. They feel like because society doesn't want them, their family doesn't want them, husband doesn't want them, wife doesn't want them. It feels like they've just been pushed aside by life. Nobody sees them anymore. Nobody talks to them anymore. It just seems to put a strain on your life and you ask when you have these issues, when you're put in this place, what do you do? This lady had an issue and it said that she had used all that she had. She had gone everywhere she could go. She had talked to all that would talk to her. She couldn't be touched. She couldn't be fixed. She couldn't be hugged. She couldn't be loved. She couldn't even be hugged by the children if she had any. She couldn't be hugged by her husband if she had any, if she had one. What can she do? And I'm sure somebody out there that's listening right now, because I believe that God tunes in the ones that needed to be tuned in today to this sermon. And they're asking, what can I do? I have an issue that I'm afraid to share with anybody because I feel like I've been shunned because of the problem. So how do I fix a problem? when I can't share it with anyone. So it said that she heard that there was a man. There was a man that had already made the storms behave. He had made the wind be calm and the waves calm down. He had made demons come out of a man and go into the swine. He had just in speaking made the centurion's servant come alive. She had heard that there's a man. Just on hearing this, she heard that there was a man that might be able to help her. So as she quietly moved through the crowd, because everybody wanted to get close to the man, but she had to silently move through the crowd because she didn't want anyone to know that she was there because no one wanted to touch this woman because by law, if they touched her, they too would be unclean. So as she finally saw Jesus, she looked at him from behind because he had his back to her and she couldn't see his face but she could see a garment that he had around his waist. 
And on that garment, he had what in the KJV says a tassel. I mean, it says a hem. But it was really a thing called a, a tassel or a talent. And it hung from the four corners of his garment. And in the in Numbers, uh, I believe it's in chapter 15, it, it talks about these, these tassels and, and God tells Moses to hang these tassels on, on, on all of the, the Israelites' garments so they'll remember how good God had been through to the generations down through the years and how God had brought them through so many things and how they'll remember to keep their eyes on the Lord. And as she looked at the tassel. And, and, and all of us are thinking about a hem on our pants, but I want you to take that out of your mind because it wasn't a hem like on the end of your pants. She was looking at this tassel that was hanging from Jesus's garment. And as she watched the tassel as it hung there, she could, she could think about what, what God had told Moses. She, God told Moses that every time you look at this tassel, I want you to think about how God took care of the Israelites and brought them out of Egypt. And as she looked at that tassel, she thought about how good God had been to her. She thought about how even though she had an issue of blood and she should have been dead some 12 years ago because she should have died from bleeding to death, but God had been good to her. And I'm sure there's somebody out there right now that has some issues and if you'll just look at, 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 at your past, look back through the generations and look and you can say right now that you might have some issues and you might be a drunk and you might be a drug addict and you might be a liar and you might have had some problems and you might have some money issues and your marriage might not be what, it, what you want it to be. But if you look back and you can say that God sure been good to you and the woman said she, she should have been dead and she should have bled out by now. And she, even though she's tired and she shouldn't have had the energy to push through the crowd, she thought about the fact that something gave her the energy to push forward. And she thought about the fact that she looked at the tassel because God said the tassel was supposed to give her remembrance of how good God had been. And as she looked at the tassel, she thought about how somebody should have recognized who she was by now because it said there was a crowd and the crowd should have recognized who she was by now and somebody should have called out who she was and somebody should have said, that's that woman, y'all get away, but nobody recognized her. Y'all, somebody should have recognized by now who I used to be. Somebody should have recognized by now that I shouldn't be able to preach. Somebody should have recognized by now that I shouldn't have been called to be a man of God. Somebody should have recognized by now that I shouldn't be here. Somebody should have recognized by now that God sure been good to me. Somebody should have recognized by now that he done bought me a mighty long ways. Y'all, as the woman pushed through the crowd, somebody should have recognized that she was a woman that shouldn't have been where she was, but she kept her eyes, stayed on the tassel because the tassel represented that God been good to her for a mighty long time. And as she moved through the crowd, and she wasn't touching anybody because she didn't want anybody to feel the way that she felt. And as she moved through the crowd and she wasn't touching anybody because she knew that it was only one person in the crowd that could help her out of the place that she was in. She kept her eyes on the tassel because the tassel represented how good God has been to her. But she didn't just want to remember how good he's been to her through the problems. She wanted things to be better and she wanted to get over her issue. She didn't want to just remember that God has brought her through. She wanted to get to a place where she was better and she wasn't in this issue anymore. So she said, Lord, if I can just 
touched the tassel because the tassel represented that God won't just bring me to it. He'll bring me through it. See, the tassel was connected to a prayer garment. See, the prayer garment was when, when, when the Jews got ready to pray, they'd take their prayer garment off and they'd wrap it around their head. And the prayer garment represented the fact that, that they, they represented their prayer room. It was put around their heads to block out anything that was around them so they could keep their eyes stayed on God while they prayed. So she felt like if she could just get to the prayer room, if she could just touch the prayer room, if she could just touch, and I need you to understand that she couldn't touch anything else because if she touched anything else, it would become unclean just like her. It was only one cleansing being in the room. It was only one cleansing being in the place, and that was Jesus. She said if she could just get to the prayer room and be close to Jesus, she said if she could just get not touched by Jesus, but in touch with Jesus in the prayer room, she felt like things would be okay. She said she didn't kept her eyes stayed on how good he has been, but now she wants to feel how good it will be. So she felt like if she just touched him, things would change. She had faith that if he'd been good to her in the past, if she got in touch with him now, things would get better. So she pushed through the crowd without touching anybody. She felt like if she touched him, things would get better. So she touched him. She touched the tassel that was on the prayer cloth that was on Jesus. And listen to what happened. I like this part here. I like this. I like this because I don't, I don't think, I don't think anybody's ever, 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 ever recognized what happened right here. So she, she touches the garment. And when she touches the garment, Jesus asked a question. Jesus asked his disciples, who touched me? Who touched me? So all of my years, I've, I've, I've probably read this, this, this verse 100, 200 times between Sunday school and, and uh, uh, seminary and, and, and I, I can't countless times and I'm sure you have too. And, and I never thought about the fact that Jesus posed a question when this woman touched him. He said, who touched me? And it never dawned on me that Jesus should have known who touched him. It's Jesus. Why did Jesus not know who touched him? Jesus didn't know who touched him because in the moment that the woman touched his garment, she changed. So as she was coming up to him, she was a woman with issues. As she was coming up to him, she was a woman that was tired. She was a woman that was shunned. She was a woman that was useless. As she was coming up with to him, she was a woman that was focused on her past interactions with the Lord. But when she touched that tassel, she changed. So what she was when she touched him, before she touched him, was not what she was when she came in contact with him. So Jesus had to figure out who she was now. Now she was changed. He said, who touched me? And as he looked around, he realized that when the power went out, when the faith of the woman to push through the crowd, the unclean woman now had become clean. The woman that once had issue now has no issues. The woman who once was focused on the tassel now has the tassel. The woman who once 
trying to get in contact with Jesus is now in contact with Jesus. The woman that once was useless now is useful. The woman that once could not hug her children now could hug her children. Now the woman that once was not clean now is clean. Now the woman that could not be in the crowd now was in the middle of the crowd, was the focus of the miracle was the turning point of the story. Now, she could go and tell her story. All that being said, somebody out there has an issue tonight. Somebody out there was listening to this, this, this sermon, this, this, this talk, and you thought about the fact that you have an issue and it's been bothering you for a long time and you just didn't know what to do with it. And... I hope you know that all you have to do is get in contact with it. You have to push through all the mess out there, the people that's talking about you, the people that's degrading you, the people that, that don't want to have anything to do with you. Don't worry about it. I need you to keep your eyes focused on the fact that if, if, if he took care of me, if he took care of me with all my problems, if he allowed me to make it, with all my issues, if I could keep my eyes on the tassel, looking back through the generations, knowing that he took care of my mom, he took care of my dad, he took care of my granddaddy, he took care of my grandma. If I, if I could keep my eyes on the tassel, if I could just ease up close to him, knowing that I'm not worthy to look at his face, but I didn't have to look at his face. All I had to do was touch him at the hem, at the tassel of his prayer cloth. All I had to do was move into my own personal prayer room, wrap my prayer cloth around my head so I could block out all the mess that's around me, so I could keep my eyes focused on him, getting in contact with him, so I could work on myself as we bow our heads. Our Father, which I know heaven, we come to you this day, then, Father, thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Praying that you continue to touch us, keep us, guide us, Lord. Hoping that anyone out there that has issue tonight, Lord, um, lays it upon the altar and, and finds a way through tonight, Lord. Lord, I just pray that they find some way, somehow, to get closer to you. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Be blessed.